the end of the world and the beginning of the first terror, as stated in the book of Revelations, has been announced to the world through this clock behind me. The Corpus Christi chronophage clock, invented by Dr. Taylor. A very strange clock and nothing else, and it's somehow uh, artistic and scientific at the same time. However, what this clock actually is, is a UFO. It's a winged disc, it's a horned disc, and it's also a message to all of the rich and all of the Freemasons that they are about to lose everything as per chapter 9 of the book of Revelation. Let me take you through this. Here we have the uh, chronophage clock, and we have uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking here at the un unveiling, strategically placed in front of it. To cover up approximately one hour of the so-called clock face. At the bottom of the clock, there is what seems to be a couple of horns, like bull's horns, and this is a disc. So it's a horned disc, and um, the locust at the top has wings, so it's a winged disc. A winged disc? A horned disc. Now, now that you see the perspective that it is in fact a UFO, it looks slightly incorrect, doesn't it? Because it also has this extra part here at the bottom, which looks like a pendulum. Let's take a look at another very famous UFO sighting. Here in this Renaissance uh, painting of the burning of Rome, you see two things in the sky. One is a flaming torch, and two, what looks like an old-fashioned pocket watch. But it's in the sky, so it's a flying disc. And on this flying disc is an extra part. The disc and this extra part attached to the disc. If we compare that once more with Dr. Taylor's so-called clock, which is in fact a UFO, you can see that this also has this extra part there, just like the Renaissance painting of the burning of Rome. I'm going to read to you from the book of Revelation, chapter 9. The fifth trumpet brings the first terror. Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen to earth from the sky, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. When he opened it, smoke poured out as though from a huge furnace, and the sunlight and air were darkened by the smoke. Then locusts came from the smoke and descended on the earth, and they were given power to sting like scorpions. Now if you look at this clock, you'll see that um, this grasshopper, this locust, has a sting on his tail. They were told not to hurt the grass or plants or trees, but to attack all the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were told not to kill them, but to torture them for five months with agony like the pain of scorpion stings. In those days people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee away. This is where God takes away death. Death was defeated on the cross by Jesus Christ, and he said it is finished. They were told not to hurt the grass or plants or trees, but to attack all the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now that means if you have the mark of the beast, uh, these are coming for you. The locusts look like horses armed for battle. They had gold crowns on their heads. and they had human faces. Their hair was long like the hair of a woman, and their teeth were like the teeth of a lion. The locust also has fearsome teeth. They wore armor made of iron, and their wings roared like an army of chariots rushing into battle. They had tails that stung like scorpions with power to torture people. This power was given to them for five months. Their king is the angel from the bottomless pit. So it's an angel we're talking about here. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon, the destroyer. The first terror is past, but look, two more terrors are coming. Now as you can see, this locust has very strange eyes. They are in fact reptilian eyes. They are more like the eyes of a crocodile. Um, they blink side on, and they have vertical slits.
Now, we're told that uh, Satan is a reptilian, and that the fallen angels also will be reptilians, and that their children, the tares, are half human, half reptilian. That's half man, half angel, an abomination. They look like us, but they're not like us. We are sheep, they are ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. They are serpents. And here we see the sting in the tail of this locust, which is like the sting of a scorpion. All over this um, clock UFO, this clock flying saucer, there are reptilian shaped eyes. Time is displayed by a series of vernier slits and lenses. The time is 11 o'clock precisely. The time is 11 o'clock precisely. On the inside of the escape wheel is the disc of slits for the seconds. There are 60 seconds in a minute. Please also note that um, this central part of this UFO clock is built in, over this gold plate as part of the actual structure itself. I would be delighted if you would accept my invitation to come to the inauguration of the Corpus Clock and celebrate the release of the chronophage and relative time onto the unsuspecting citizens of Cambridge. So this chronophage is um, released onto the unsuspecting public of Cambridge. Well that would tell me that most of the people in Cambridge don't actually know what this clock is. Uh, if they see this video they will, um, as the rest of you will. So it's something that's been released on the unsuspecting public and it is in fact a depiction of what is to come. That the book of Revelation chapter 9 is about to begin. So what's the easiest way of collecting up a whole planet's resources? Well. If I were them, what I would do is I would find traitors and I would give them a very special name and make them think that they're all important. Perhaps I'd call them Freemasons and I'd give them secret signals and I'd make sure that if any of them got arrested, all they had to do was give a secret signal and they would be released and so on and so forth and that their business didn't have to pay any tax. Uh, yes, there is something like that going on too. And I would make sure that they collected everything and that they had it all in their bank accounts and that they had it all stored up for me in specific places. And then I would descend upon them and carry out what I intended to do in the first place. Because Satan's objective is the complete destruction of all mankind. So if you are man, if you are human and you're a Freemason, well, they are coming for you because you're the ones with all, with all of the resources and it serves you right. Uh, there is a way out though uh, because God said concerning the great whore of Babylon which is Freemasonry, come out of her my children lest you share in her punishment. Her punishment is going to be great. So for those who are Freemasons, rich, who have spent all of their lives scheming stealing and cheating in the hope that they're going to have a share in Satan's great new empire. Um, actually, his minions are coming to get you and what you consider to be your riches. And thank you very much for storing it all up for Satan, he will say. Yes, but you're going to suffer. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be used as a scapegoat. Like I said, Freemasons are the stupidest people on this earth. Number one, because they reject Jesus Christ. And uh, also number one, because they reject being a human being. Because human beings have a share in the kingdom of God. Everything belongs to 